sound like in a crisis. Meaning, when, when I use the word crisis, I mean in, in difficult times for your life. So I'm not just talking about crisis as far as the pandemic or, or the, this race battle or whatever. I'm talking about whatever storm you're going through in your life. What does your prayer sound like? And, and we looked at um, uh, 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 First Timothy last week, and we talked about how uh, we talked about how um, uh, Scripture tells us that that even when people are coming against us, even when we're going through difficult times, even when we don't agree with everyone, one of the things we must do is we must pray for everyone. That's right. We must pray for everybody. Listen, uh, 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 I, I was talking to my, 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 my uncle yesterday, who's one of my spiritual mentors, and we had a, just a great dialogue, a great conversation, and he was asking me, hey, man, what do you, he, he always uh, encourages me, and he always asks, hey, what are you going, what, what you preaching on uh, uh, tomorrow? And, and, you know, I tell him, hey, man, we're going to be in this, in this area, and he was like, man, that's exactly what people need, because there are so many people in the body of Christ when we're going through hard times, man, prayer is the last thing we think about. Right. It's the last thing that comes on our mind because we're, 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 we're hurting and we're broken and, 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 and we're frustrated and we're tired. And, 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 and some people have came against us and some people have, have turned their back on us and some people is constantly talking about us and trying to bring harm into our life. We, we're in the middle of a, of a spiritual race battle and, and people, this, this race is turning against this race and this race is turning against this race. We're right in the middle or in the midst of a political uh, 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 campaign and so people saying, you vote for this person, you ain't this or if you vote for this person, you ain't this. And so the last thing that comes to our mind is praying for everybody. And so we talked about last week how uh, uh, Paul writes this letter to a young pastor, young Timothy, and he tells Timothy, listen, false teachers are going to come your way. They're going to come against you because you're teaching Bible and they want to teach the tradition of man. They want to teach what, what someone has taught them. But you have to stick to the scripture. And the scripture says that we must pray for everybody. And he goes later into the text and he says, we got to pray for those who are in authority. We have to pray for those who are in high positions. He used the word kings. In, 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 uh, 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 kings and high places and, and all these different things that we must pray. Even if we don't agree, we must pray. And so what I find very fascinating about it, okay, is why is it that we must pray? Why, why should we pray for everyone? Number one, the Bible uses the word supplications. And, uh, uh, and when it uses the word supplication, uh, it also mean, uh, uses the word intercessor. That means that we step in the gap. We pray for one another. We cry out to God for other people. Yes. That, that's our responsibility. If we are, we, I gave you some, these words last week. If we are to be kingdom minded, we're kingdom minded people. If we're about the kingdom agenda, if we're about God's business, if we're about to, if we're about seeing transformation, all these different things, then we must pray for one another. We must step in the gap. We must step in and say, you know what? I, I, I'm going to pray for you just like Jesus prayed for us. Yeah. yeah. We, we must pray for others. And so as I begin to read the scripture even deeper, I was like, you know what? We've been talking about the kingdom agenda. The kingdom agenda is actually mentioned in this scripture. What is the kingdom agenda? Look at this text. First Peter chapter 2. He says, first of all, then, I, I urge you that, uh, now I'm in the CSB this week, uh, that all petitions, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for the kings of all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and, and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Here it is. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved yes. and to come into the knowledge of truth. Yes. So you want to know what the kingdom agenda is? The kingdom agenda is that everyone gets to know Christ Jesus. That everyone gets saved. That everyone has a relationship with God. And so my question is, is what does your prayer sound like when someone has came against you? When you're going through hard times? Do you have the prayer of a kingdom minded person with the kingdom agenda in mind? That those who come to who, who's coming to get you get saved. Yeah. That's the kingdom agenda. That's right. 
That's what our prayer should sound like when someone is coming to us. You know, people always use that phrase, oh, we have to have a come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> we have to come to Jesus meeting. No, come to Jesus meeting means that I'm praying for you that Jesus comes into your life. Amen. That he saves you. That's the kingdom agenda, is that God has a desire that everyone be saved. Yes. The question is, do we have that desire? Come on. Is that our prayers? Or does our prayer, we talked about this week after week after week, does our prayer, is it only about us? Right. If it's only about us, then that's not, that's not the kingdom agenda. And that's not being kingdom minded. The text says that God has a desire that everyone be saved. That's what our prayer should sound like. Preacher, you mean even those who came against me, I got to pray for them? To, yeah, you should be praying that they get to know Jesus. Not in a selfish way to where you're trying to uh, 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 prove some type of point or anything like that. No, but that they really have a relationship with Christ Jesus. That's the, mind, that's the mindset of a kingdom-minded person. Is that I, have a, I don't want to see nobody left behind. Yeah, that's right. I want everyone to have a relationship with Jesus like I do. I, want you to, I don't want you to just be in love with Jesus. but I, I, I mean, I don't want you to just love Jesus. I want you to be in love with Jesus. I want you to be in love with him to where, to where man can. To where he's on your mind daily. To where you just want to live and please him. To where you just want to do the right thing. To where you just want to help everyone. To where you just, you don't want to talk bad about people no more. You want to be there to help. I, I want to be a kingdom-minded person. Man, how can I be a kingdom-minded person? By praying for everyone. Yeah. And that's what Paul is saying in this text. Now, you got to understand this, and we're going to get to, to, to the second part of this. But you got to understand this. In those days... Uh, when false teachers came against you, they weren't coming against you just to talk to you or talk about you. No, they was trying to bring chaos within your life. Yeah. And if you go through and study scripture, that, that the Pharisees and Sadducees and, 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 and other false prophets and, and, and all these other different people, man, they wanted to really damage you. Like, like, they didn't care if, if you suffered. They didn't care if you were in pain. They didn't care if you were going through storms and hard times. They didn't care as long as they got theirs. They didn't care about that. They didn't care if, 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 if they hurt your feelings. They didn't care if, if your, your family was sick. They didn't care about none of that stuff. They didn't care. Matter of fact, they were teaching in a way and trying to say, you know what? Because you're going against what we teach again, uh, teaching against, it's good that you're going through that. That's how they live. That's the danger of, okay, watch this. I was listening to uh, a, a young man speak this morning. My wife always tells me, why are you always watching this junk? Because I'll be on YouTube watching a bunch of foolishness, uh, especially when it's someone uh, 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 who, who, who is uh, pretending to be something that they're not, or, or someone who, 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 who says that they're preaching the word of God, but if you get into God's word, you know they're not. So there was this prophet, uh, I'm not going to say his name, this guy who calls himself a prophet, uh, and he's a prophet over there in Africa. He's a prophet in Africa. And uh, uh, he, he prophesied back in, in uh, March. He prophesied in March, uh, uh, back when the, the, the corona uh, virus just kind of really came and hit hard. He prophesied in March, and he says, the Holy Spirit told me that by the end of March, the pandemic is going to be over. Well, they, they kept the video. April came. May came. All, you know, June came. The guy, so nothing happened, of course. The guy went into hiding. He hid from everybody. He, I can't show my face. This is a true story. This is all on, 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 on uh, I said true story, but it's on YouTube. <laughs> it's on YouTube. So, because <laughs> you can't believe everything that you know, you know. But it's on YouTube. And, and so the guy went to hiding. And so they, they found the video. He finally came, came out. And he says, you know what? The Holy Spirit lied to me and told me wrong. True story. The Holy Spirit lied to me and told me that the pandemic was going to end at the end of March. He blamed the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. The Holy Spirit misled me. He lied to me. He lied to me 
and told me that the pandemic was going to end in March. And my wife, I was like, why are you watching that crazy stuff? Because I like to see these crazy nuts out there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what this person said. This person said, man, the Holy Spirit lied to me. You're going to lie on God like that. And so that's how some of these false prophets and some false teachers were back in those days that they would say different things and they would do different things, man, not just to get under your skin, but to truly drive you out of town. Right. And so Paul says, man, pray for those people because it's God's desire that they be saved as well. That you can be religious and still not be saved. That you can be religious and still not be saved. You can still miss this thing. And, and Paul says, that's the kingdom of Jenny. Everyone gets to know God. And so the next question is, is, you know, what does our prayer sound like in the crisis? Well, how do we pray? What do we say? What do we do? And we find that out in the book of Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 5, very familiar scripture. We kind of all know this as the Lord's Prayer, um, uh, but this, this prayer is, is a model of how Jesus tells us, here is how you pray. But what I love about it is that Jesus tells us first what we shouldn't do, how we shouldn't pray. Before he goes into, okay, here's how you pray. He tells us what we shouldn't do. And I love it because he talks about my favorite people in scripture. The Pharisees. <laughs> I love talking about them. And the reason I do is because I used to have that mindset of, 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 of very, very religious and very traditional. Uh, uh, I wasn't in, a, in, in political stuff like that, but I was very religious and very traditional. So I would teach that from, from not from what the Bible says, but, be, but from what I was taught. And, and I remember even having Bible studies before we planted the church, when we was having Bible studies at, at my apartment, uh, I remember having Bible studies, and I think about some of the conversations that we were having there, and I was like, man, I was speaking from a religious standpoint. So I see the growth within myself because I'm like, man, there was some things that I was saying that was, that's just what somebody told me, but that ain't scripture. And so Jesus tells, he, he, he's talking in the text. Let me give you some, some context real quick. This, this is the, 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 the famous Sermon on the Mount. And, and he's, 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 he, he, he's gathering, he, you know, there's people that's gathered around him, and Jesus is talking about a whole bunch of different things, some things that, that nobody has really spoke on about. And he's beginning to talk about fasting, and he's beginning to talk about loving one another, and he's beginning to talk about uh, uh, don't, don't uh, get revenge, or try to get revenge on other people. He goes and gives the Beatitudes. He gives all these different things, but then he gets into prayer. And listen to what he says in the text, verse 6, I mean, chapter 6, verse 5. Let me go to verse 5. And he says, be careful. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let, let's go to verse 5, not, not, not verse 1. Chapter 6, verse, verse 1. Uh, verse 5, sorry. He says, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Because if somebody called me a hypocrite, <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's, that's like fighting words. That, that's a strong word right there. When someone is calling you a hypocrite, that means that you are pretending to be something that you're really not. That means that you're acting a certain way in front of other people. You, you, you're telling people what to do, but you don't do what you're telling people. That, that, that's, a, that's a strong, dangerous word. And so when you go through deep and you see who he's talking about, he's talking about religious people. Man, as I like to say, church people. Hmm. And he says, when you pray, don't pray like the hypocrites. Don't be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues, which means the temples, today will be translated to the church, uh, the synagogues, uh, on the air on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. He says, man, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't pray for attention. Don't pray for attention. Don't pray for people's approval. Don't pray for 
a, 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 a hand clap or, or a pat on the back. Don't pray so where people can say, boy, you sure can pray. Boy, you sure got a prayer in you. So, no, don't pray for those reasons. And, 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 and that may sound simple, but you'll be surprised at what people's motives are. You'd be surprised. Uh, uh, uh. And, and so Jesus says, man, don't pray like them. Don't go into the church house and, and try to act like this holy, holy, holy person. And, or go out to the street corners to where everybody can see you. Uh, because Jesus says something next in the text. Look what he says. He says, but when you pray, go into your private room. Some translations say closet, just depending on your, your translation. Go into your private room, shut the door, and pray to your father in, uh, who is in secret. And your father who is in secret will reward you. He says, okay, don't pray for attention. Don't pray for approval. Don't pray to where everybody can see you, to where you're making this big spectacle and all these different things. But he says, go into your private room. You know what that lets me know? That prayer is between you and God. Prayer is between you and God. Write, write this down real quick. Write this down. Uh, 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 prayer should be a priority in your life. Prayer should be a priority in your life. And then also write this down. Prayer is an essential for godly living. It's an essential for godly living. In other words, that as believers or followers in Christ Jesus, prayer must be a part of our lives. It should be a priority. And it is an essential for godly living. So if we are pursuing godliness, if we are trying to live for, to please the kingdom, if we're trying to live as a kingdom-minded person, then prayer must be a part of our lives, man. Amen. That we must have a prayer life. And Jesus says, when you pray, when you pray, do not pray like other people. Do not try to do things for attention, but go into your private room. And when I think of private rooms, I think of other, other translations. I think of the closet, uh, uh, going to my prayer closet. And when I begin to think about that, I was walking the other morning, God just kind of spoke some things. When I think of my closet, I think of uh, I'm going in there and it's just me and my clothes. And my clothes have no life. My clothes can't give me a response. My clothes can't pat me on the back. My clothes can't say, boy, you're doing a good job. My clothes can't do that. And sometimes we have to get away from life. We have to get away from things. We have to get away from people. We got to get away from all this other stuff and go into our secret prayers with our Father. Because life becomes a distraction. People become a distraction. Material things become our distraction. I told my wife the other day as we were riding and she gave me that question that y'all, I told y'all I don't like. She said, what you thinking? I can't stand that question. And I think she knows that. So now she's doing it on purpose. And so we're riding, and, and, and I'm riding, and I'm just kind of in deep thought. And, and there she is. She like, and she starts saying something. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just She said, what you thinking about? Don't ask me that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. The Holy Spirit is convicting me right now because there are some things that he has told me to do that I didn't do. There are some things that he has told me, hey, I, you need to go get this done. You need to do this. You need to do this. And I told my wife, I said, man, let me tell you what my biggest distraction has been. My cell phone. My cell phone was my big, or is my biggest distraction. And because either I'm in my recliner watching TV on my cell phone, or I'm in my bed and my TV watching uh, on my cell phone, or, or I'm in my office where I'm, I, I've been studying, I've been reading, I've been studying, but I'm like, you know what, I'm taking a break. I get on my cell phone. Right? I get on my phone. It has become my biggest distraction. And so when we pray in secret, when we pray to God, we have to get, uh, get away from all those distractions, man. That's why I love the translation that said go into your private room or go into your closet. Ain't nobody there but you and God. There's nothing else or no one else there. And so Jesus says when you pray, don't pray for attention. Man, you go to your father in secret. You go to your father. Your, your, your prayer is between you and God. I don't have to tell you what I prayed about. You don't have to tell me what you prayed about because it's between you and God. And so many people want to try to impress people that that's not how our prayers are, our prayer life is. And Jesus says this. He says, man, 
Those people who pray in the synagogue for attention or on the street corner for their attention, their reward is the applause of people. That's, right. yeah. that's their reward. That, 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 that's what brings them happiness. That's what brings them joy is when people say, boy, you know, Joe did a good job. Oh, boy, you sure got a prayer in you. You must be a prayer warrior. Watch out. Right, Y'all know what I'm talking about. What? Watch out. Like, I, I don't, I, I, we, we have to stop doing things for the approval of man. Yes. And so Jesus says, no, go get away from everybody. Go into your closet and you pray to your father in secret. That's good. But then he goes into the text and he says, verse 7, and when you pray, do not babble like the Gentiles. Since they imagine they will be heard for their many words. <laughs> do not pray, uh, do not be like them because your father knows the things you need before you ask. Okay. So Jesus says, man, don't pray for attention. And don't be like people who just be getting up there saying a whole bunch of different things. Okay. Have you ever been around someone that when they pray, can I just be honest, you're looking at them like, man, I wish this prayer would be over. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Like, what in the world are you talking about? Like, just begin to say things and, 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 you, and try to phrase words and put them together and make it sound all holy and spiritual, and especially when you know of their life. And, and, and they sit there saying, hey, you know, in doing this thing, oh, Lord, we lift up holy hands to you. But wait a minute. Those are the same hands you call it holy that you were doing? Okay, let me stop. Okay, and so uh, 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 people would just babble and go on and go on and go on and say a whole bunch of empty phrases. Yeah. Not saying anything. And I know I shared this before, but, man, one of the things, and y'all got to, if, if I'm wrong, y'all pray, pray that the Lord forgives me. Pray that the Lord makes me a, a better person. But man, one of the things I really, really dislike is, is when we call on certain people to pray at Thanksgiving. For the Thanksgiving meal, we always call on that individual who won't just get right to the point. <laughs> and they just go on and on and on, and they just begin to say a whole bunch of different things. Listen, I have no problem with, no, with people expressing giving thanks. I have no problem with that. We should. Every day should be a day of thanks. We should. Lord, I thank you for everything. And if you are being thankful for everything, I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is that when people just use empty phrases and just begin to babble things, that really has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, that has nothing to do with anything. So Jesus says, don't be like those people. Don't be like those people to where you try to sound holy and sound spiritual but what they saying ain't even making sense. He says why would you do that when your father already knows what you need before you even ask? That's the God we serve. He already he knows everything about us. He knows our very needs. The, the scripture said that he knows the, the amount of hairs on our head and, uh, uh, and everything. And so he knows everything about us so why would we babble and why would we just continue to go on when he already knows what we need before we ask. Right. That's a holy God that we serve. So your, word, your words doesn't make you spiritual. Yeah. Your long prayers doesn't make you spiritual. That's right. That's the, that doesn't make you a spiritual person. Because we are supposed to go to God in secret. And we're supposed to pray to God in a holy matter. Uh, matter uh, uh, even though he already knows what we need man. Because that honors God. So we ask the question, uh, uh, when we're going through a crisis, what does, our what does our prayer sound like? Man, it has to be a way that honors God. So whatever you're praying right now, your prayer life, ask yourself, man, am I praying in a way that honors God? And then Jesus goes later into the text. Now, I love this because Jesus has people around him. It's not just his disciples. It's some other people, but he's, he's actually teaching his disciples. Listen, because Jesus had already been teaching, repent, kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
He's already been teaching that. And, and he's trying to tell his disciples and he's telling other people, listen, man, prayer is important. And, and, and uh, many of you have never had a prayer life, so let me explain to you what you need to do, how you need to pray, and how you shouldn't pray. But then he goes next to the text. And he goes into what we call the Lord's Prayer. And I'm, going, I'm reading from the CSB, but I know if you grew up in church, you probably memorized it in the King James. Or, so what, or whatever Bible version you, you're reading or whatever you use. So when I'm reading it, you say it in the way that you learn. Right? Here we go. CSB says, therefore you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven. Uh, your name, uh, honor as holy. So uh, holy is your name or hallowed be your name, depending on your translation. Uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And, le and lead us not, oh, I, went, I just went right into something that ain't even in this Bible translation. <laughs> but I went by what I know, right? And, and do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then the new King James and the King James goes into, for thine is the kingdom, or for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Uh, uh, amen. And when we talk about Bible translations, we'll talk about uh, uh, why that scripture is in certain translations and why it is not. Because so many people try to say, oh, well, that, that uh, 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 people, uh, those Bible translations ain't the true word of God. They, they missing verses. They missing verses. No, let's explain that. We, we, we're going to talk about that so we can have clarity of what that actually means. Don't get me started on that either. Um, uh, now, what was my point? Because I done got, I done, my mind don't went there. Oh, we talked about the, what Jesus said in the prayer. So he gives us a model of how we should pray. So when we pray, the first thing we need to do is honor God. That's, right. That's the first thing. We honor God and we praise God. That's the first thing that we need to do when we pray. Where we fail is when we pray, the first thing we do is ask. Yeah. We become selfish. And we don't even honor the God who we ask him to receive from. Right. That we must give God glory. We must honor him. That's why the text says, uh, uh, holy is your name. Hollow is your name. God, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing you as the holy God. I'm recognizing you. I'm giving you the honor and the respect that you deserve. I praise you. I give you thanks for any and everything that you have done for us. Another part of the prayer that we miss, uh, uh, we used to use prayer as an acronym, uh, uh, when I, especially when I was a youth pastor. It was kind of the easiest way I could teach uh, uh, kids uh, um, prayer, uh, that you praise, that you repent, that you ask, and then you yield. And we'll talk about what that meant. And so when we pray, the first thing we must do, man, we should, we should uh, praise God. But then before we ask God, we need to repent. Like, really, God, I'm sorry for all my mess up. I, I, not only I'm sorry, but I'm turning away from it, and I'm, I'm trying my best never to do that to you ever, ever again. That's what repentance is. It's, it's true, showing true remorse. God, I'm broken because of what I've done. I'm, I'm hurting because of what I've done, because I know I have disappointed you. I'm turning away from that, and I'm, I'm, I'm striving not to do that ever, ever again. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want, but what we do is we go right to God. We don't honor God. We don't repent. We go right to God. This is what I need. Can I tell you what that is? That's us being selfish. That's us being selfish. That's saying, God, I'm putting my needs before giving you glory for anything. I'm putting my needs before me honoring who you really are. Jesus says, our Father. He says, our Father. You are our Father. Father, I'm coming to you. I'm honoring you. I'm praising you. Why? Because, man, that's who you are. You deserve it all. You deserve it. And, and, and then I say, God, I repent of everything that I've done, everything that I've thought, everything that I've said. Then we can begin to ask. Then we can begin to ask, and I know I'm kind of speed through it because I want to get us out of here. We ask, but then we yield. What does that mean? That means that we, Holy Spirit, whatever your will is, let your will be done. Whatever your will is, That's right. whatever it is that you desire to do in my life, let your will be done. That's the model prayer. So, 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 so many people 
read the Lord's Prayer and say the Lord's Prayer. And I think that's great. That's awesome. We should, we should learn it. We should know it. But it's, it's supposed to be used as a model. Here is how you pray. Here is what you need to do. Man, you honor God. You repent. Then you ask. And then you give. So we ask a question. What does your prayer sound like in the crisis? Man, are you following that acronym? Are you praising God, honoring God? Are you repenting of your sins? And then you can ask, then you yield. Because, man, there are some things that we may ask for that the Holy Spirit says, no, but that's not what I want for your life. So, Holy Spirit, whatever you want, whatever you you, you want to, to take place today, whatever you, you uh, uh, see that, that is necessary for, to happen today, let your will be done. That's what our prayer should sound like. We should honor God, man. Our prayer should be, we should pray for other people uh, that, that because God has a desire that other people be saved. So our prayer should be that God, people become, uh, uh, get closer to you and, and to know you. And, and God, uh, 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 our prayer should also sound like what Jesus said the Lord prayer is. When we talk about prayer, man, prayer is it has to, in order for us to truly grow, man, who, who wouldn't want to talk to their father? The heavenly father. I cannot imagine me and my son not having a daily conversation. I cannot imagine me and my daughters not having a daily conversation. I can't imagine. And now we have, we have made a commitment to actually sit at the dinner table and talk as a family. And last night was, was week, man, we stayed up to 10, 30, 11 o'clock, just at the dinner table, uh, 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 just talking about life, just talking about things. And I'm like, man, these are conversations I love. Man, God wants to have a, he wants you to have a conversation with him. Yes. And there shouldn't be a day to where we don't have a conversation with our Heavenly Father, our Creator, our Savior. Prayer must be a priority in our lives because it is an essential for godly living. Yes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we love you and we give you glory for all that you've done and, and just, man, just for who you are. And so we thank you for teaching us that when we're going through adversity, that here's, what, here's how we need to pray. So forgive us, Father God, if we made prayers all about self and not about truly honoring you. Forgive us if we haven't been following your model the example that you have left for us, that you have told us. That we should praise you and honor you. That we should repent. Then we ask. And then we yield to whatever it is you have for us. Father, I pray right now that every believer in here, that you just give us the, 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 the courage and, the, and the, the, the strength and the endurance and the drive to want to have a prayer life with you. And that we don't do things for attention, but we do things uh, to honor and please you. So I pray that we all have our own prayer clauses, uh, whether that's in a, a, a physical closet, whether that's in a, 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 just another room by themselves, whether it's in the car by themselves, whether it's in their workplace by themselves, whatever the case may be, to where they get away from all distractions and they have a conversation with you. And I pray, Father God, that you honor the prayers and that you, that you uh, 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 bless those prayers and that you answer those prayers, Father God. And Father, I thank you for uh, uh, every person and I pray that you just uh, heal uh, for those who need healing. I pray that you provide for those who, who need your provisions. I, I, I pray for those uh, uh, who need your protection who needs your counsel, who needs your wisdom, who needs uh, uh, your, your blessing, Father God, your touch. I pray for those, and I pray these things in Jesus' name, that everything begin to be restored and that it be made new. And I pray for FFBC. I pray for what you're doing uh, uh, in this local house and how you are using uh, 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 technology and how you are using just other people to share your love and to share your word. And so I pray that your presence and your anointing just flows through this place like never before to where it has an impact on lives of people. It ain't about us, Father God. It's all about you. You get the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap.